this is Alan McKay and I just want to do a quick video from my hotel in Boston. I'm out here working on a new film and just out here for a couple of weeks and I wanted to kind of touch base on a subject to see whether people are interested in this before I jump in head first and start to develop a lot of material for it and then find out that everyone just wants to stick to doing particle effects and not really kind of go look at the big picture stuff and um, you know, kind of the more kind of next level uh, TD kind of work. But in this situation, um, while I'm out here, I don't have any render power whatsoever, but I need to be doing a lot of really heavy duty uh, film effects sims and other effects. So I wanted to develop a pretty simple approach to be able to um, be working from a workstation in Boston on the other side of the country and then be able to quickly hit a button and have what I'm working on in Max there uh, then simulate in LA on the other side of the country okay uh, and then bring me back all my rendered images once it's done uh, instantly so you know I could have gone a, a lot more fancier than how I've currently done it but I wanted to more kind of build it in a way that I have complete control and I don't need to transfer it anything unless I actually know it's what I want but the idea behind it is something that's it's pretty simple in terms of what it's doing but under the hood it's actually doing a lot of pretty nifty stuff where uh, once I get a file to LA it actually uh, repasses it and integrates it into my uh, pipeline and directory structure and repass the film effects caches the render output everything and then it will go and submit all my fume sims to sim on the farm uh, and then render and everything else and then transfer back uh, pretty you know quickly and painlessly so um, I, like I said I could go fancy but fancy isn't necessarily the best approach it's more about finding something that's the most practical and more time effective and also just you know gives you the most power uh, through uh, doing it in that approach but there is a lot of this stuff that uh, I've been doing over the past couple of years it's a lot more advanced where I'm literally generating like effect shots from scratch based on key information so I can just literally say okay I create explosion here or set this character on fire or destroy this you know army of hundreds of people individually as individual sims or whatever it's going to be um, there's lots of different things that I've been kind of developing a lot for and it's something that I find to be a really exciting uh, area and it's also probably the only thing that ever like stresses me out a lot I think effects these days it's kind of like you know I've been doing it long enough that I'm not really ever I don't really ever feel too challenged but the more ambitious I get with finding ways to cut down on artist time so that way your shots are 98% already done and it's just that extra 2% that you need the artist to put in their skill set to uh, to actually achieve the result um, to me that's something that's always fascinated me but I'm not sure whether it's something that interests other people or whether it's just my thing so I want you guys to watch this video it's very short it's like two minutes and if you like it then I'll go and build some cool content um, based on similar stuff so anyway let's jump in and watch this video and then I'll be back Okay, so uh, basically what we're doing here is pretty straightforward. Um, I just have my file and, you know, pretty simple. It's just some particles swirling around in a fume container. I just wanted to quickly knock something up. All I do here is I hit this button and this will um, save it to Dropbox. Okay. And so what it does is save it to a specific folder for my Dropbox which is synced with LA. And so instantly that goes online to the cloud and within seconds it appears in the same folder in LA. Next, um, I load up my uh, remote desktop I'm using LogMeIn uh, to go to LA. Pretty simple. Um, and then I run this script here. And what this will do is it actually reads that directory um, for all the max files that it has and it displays the time and date and all that stuff so from there I just click the one that I want to load and um, once that's brought in um, 
as you can see, I have the max file that a minute ago or a second ago, I should say, I had in uh, Boston on my main machine. Okay, so that took one second to do. Um, the cool thing is that you can't see it, but what it's done is actually read the uh, actual uh, file name, the max file, and that has all the information it needs. It knows the project, it knows the sequence, it knows the shot code, it knows the um, effects elements, like the name of it, as well as the version. And it takes all those bits of information and it goes out onto my file server, my network in Los Angeles, and it will actually uh, save the max file into the designated place. So it'll create all the necessary directories and it'll place the file where it should be located as if I was in LA doing the shot. It also goes to my render images directory, creates uh, the render image there. It also goes to however many FemaFX caches I have, uh, in this case it's just one, and it will go and create directories for that. Uh, and then it repaths all those bits of information so that way they're path exactly where they need to be. So not that complicated, but it means that, you know, rather than me having to manually go and do all this stuff every time I submit a file, it instantly will, what I do is I load up in LA, um, you know, just hit this tool, it brings up all my files that I've transferred recently. It even shows the date and everything so I can tell, you know, uh, which one uh, I, I want to load. And uh, from there, it will instantly load it up and integrate it into my LA pipeline, which is completely different to the pipeline uh, here in Boston. And so, you know, we can see the new cache path, uh, render paths, everything are set up and ready to go. From here, I just want to submit this to simulate. Um, so that will be the next step is basically to submit this to Backburner, which is what I'm using, it's free, it comes with Max and Maya, so uh, really cool. So all I'm gonna do here is simply um, submit the job to the farm. And here we can see that it's located the simulation as well as the render image sequence as well, um, which is super cool. So that way, um, once the simulation is done, the render activates as a dependency. So now that the render is done, it's all simulated, it's all rendered, uh, we can see the images there. So again, just to recap so far, I've literally, uh, seconds ago, uh, hit a button, remote into, you know, I already had it open, but just switched to my window there, hit a button there to load my file, and then uh, submit it to the farm, and everything's ready, fixed, and done, and rendered. Okay, so the final step, once I'm happy with where everything is, uh, I have a, you know, the last tool that I built, which is to send back to Boston. Okay, and all I need to do with that is simply load up the tool that I am using. And what it will do is it'll go through and it will generate um, the output directory. You can see here it's transferring the files. I'm back in. Boston on my main workstation now, you can see that it's transferred the files over as well as a QuickTime video, uh, which it also generated as well. Um, it's transferring all this stuff uh, back to my local machine, all, all rendered and all where it should be, um, and in the proper render output path as if I had rendered it locally here. So it isn't that tricky to do, and you know, it's more about just like one of a million examples I can think of that show how to make your production process simple. And I like the idea of this because I always have this dream of being able to work on my MacBook Pro in Max from the beach, you know, and be able to still have uh, all this super powerful render equipment uh, at my fingertips. So something like this is really interesting to me, but it also just means that no matter where I go, I have access to my entire render farm and I can quickly knock stuff out um, and store it where it needs to be, but then also integrate it back into whatever studio pipeline, wherever I am at. Okay, so finally, you can see also here that uh, just the general overview, we can see that initially we submit a job. Uh, it goes through Dropbox, it's received in LA, uh, where it scans the Dropbox directory, displays all the files, times, and dates, allows you to easily double click to load the file. 
and upon loading the file, it creates a new render output directory, corrects the shot um, directory as well as the versioning, repass all FumeFX grids to the FumeFX drive and versions each grid, saves the max file in the proper project and shot and element location by extracting all necessary shot info from the file itself. Uh, Max is now on the network, everything is pathed correctly for simulating and rendering. And from there, we submit it to the farm, which automatically simulates all grids, render image sequences via Backburner, configures each grid for simulating, and submits each container to the farm as a simulation job with the unique ID, name, and container, and exact file of the job name. So in other words, when I submit a job, because if you submit, like, one shot which is 20 containers and then like you need to adjust one specific one or whatever you or you don't know which one is not working like you know it's the worst thing because you can't identify which sim job is which so by having the name of each container in the actual render job uh, on the farm it means that you can identify which uh, containers being simmed on which machine is just a lot easier at the same time being able to tell uh, what the specific max file that it was submitted from is. So that way, like, if you need to backtrack your steps, then it's very easy to do so. Um, it also submits a render image sequence to render out the final image uh, as a dependent. So that way, once all these simulation jobs are complete, it then will um, activate that job. And lastly, once it's all done, we have one last tool, which is to transfer. And what that does is it creates correctly named render pass directory on the original local file server in the proper render images directory location. Uh, it also generates a batch file for transferring data back to the original file server, executes the batch file to transfer image sequences and a QuickTime back to the original server into the correct uh, render location and also generates a QuickTime as well which will go onto Dropbox in a dated folder so that way it's you know, if you're submitting a lot of stuff for dailies uh, which I was doing on witches it just meant that whenever I submit stuff either for clients it'll go into today's date so it's easy uh, to then give to the client uh, for them to review and at the same time because I was working remotely I couldn't really view image sequences very well on my Mac Pro so having QuickTimes just appear magically on my laptop to review while I'm working it just meant that I could work in LogMeIn on my machine in LA this is separate to this but um, and then submit render jobs and then have a QuickTime appear as soon as it's done for me to review so I could submit a lot of jobs go away to a meeting come back and have all my renders look at them see what I need to tweak next do the next batch off and that way i was able to actually work remotely from my laptop on a few productions very seamlessly so these sort of tools just really are the beginning of building bigger better things but really kind of show you a lot of uh, the powerful things that you can do okay so that's it for now and lastly um add me to twitter add me to facebook um and here's my website as well the main reason I'm doing this is not for some superficial BS, it's because over the holiday period I'm going to be creating a lot of videos and this is where they're going to be posted. So it's better to jump on board than miss out. Secondly, if this subject that I'm showing right now, if this excites you, which is the whole point of this video, if this is something you want to see then get on Twitter and tell me and this is where my time will be put okay I've got time off over the Christmas period and I know that everyone else does too so during this time I want to start interacting with everyone I want to start developing a lot of cool material but very specific to what you will most benefit from so get on Twitter and tell me if this video was something that you liked and you want to see more of this type of thing, more, more how to generate quick times or automate past, automate your effects, you know, whatever it's going to be. I've got plenty of stuff and I'm ready to do it. I just don't want to spend the very limited time that I have doing stuff that I'm going to find out that only like a small percentage of the people out there actually are that really kind of into, you know what I mean? 
So tell me on Twitter.